Welcome to Hear God Every Day. I'm your host, Sarah Witten. Get comfortable, open your heart, and let's talk about how we can be more sensitive to God's voice in our everyday life. This week is called God's Doing It, but He wants to do it right. So if you are in a season of waiting or a season of maybe you're stepping out into something new that God's called you to, but instead of this, you know, accelerated rush that you expected, it's kind of like just plodding along and you're kind of waiting for, okay, I thought there was going to be more happening. You know what's going on, God. So if that is your season, or if that is the season of somebody, you know, uh, please send them this first of all, and be praying for them. But I feel like the Lord has uh, a word today of encouragement for, uh, those who are in this season. And if you are not in that season, we all hit those places at one time or another. And so store this away and the Holy Spirit will bring it to mind when you need it the most. Before we even start, I'm just going to pray. Lord, I just invite your presence into this place. I invite your Holy Spirit to occupy the space of time. Lord, I pray for encounter. I pray for these words to be your words and not mine. I pray for encouragement to come from this. I pray for um, a closer walk with you and a deeper revelation of your love. God, may we um, order things correctly and may we be obedient even when we don't understand. And so we ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. So uh, this week I was in Deuteronomy 2 and it's literally called Wanderings in the Wilderness. And so you know, we all have those seasons that feel like wanderings in the wilderness where you're like, okay, you know, I know it's kind of feels like a staging area where you're like, I know that this something's coming, but like, it doesn't really feel like much is moving right now. So they'd been wandering for a while. And what happens over the course of this chapter, which I encourage you to spend some time with the Lord and just kind of go through and read this chapter is, uh, there are several, um, as God calls them, uh, to kind of move and tells them where to go, go here, go here, go here. Uh, along the way, there are several occasions where God says specifically, do not go to war for this territory because I have given this land to the people who are dwelling in it. Okay. And he reminds his people I have blessed you in all the work of your hands. I've watched over you in your journey. These 40 years I've been with you, you've not lacked anything. He reminds them of his faithfulness and he has been so faithful. And I believe that's because he wants them to not lose hope that what he has for them is good. He doesn't want them to fall into the lie of the enemy that God is holding out on them. But it gets harder and harder for the Israelites to do this because you know, it's like, oh, well, don't take that Tory. Don't take that territory. It belongs to somebody else. Or, you know, don't, don't go to war with these people or this place that you're about to pass through is not your possession. And so it's like, they're getting all these no's yet they're on the course of where God is calling them to. So it's not like they're off course. God's just telling them not yet. That's not the one. This is not it. So maybe you're already like Holy Spirit's, you know, kind of tugging on your heart and you're like, yes, that is me. I feel like I've just been getting like, not yet, not yet. It's not the one, not yet. And as we near, uh, kind of later on in the chapter, almost towards the end, God finally says, set out now and cross the Arnon Gorge. This is verse 24. See, I have given into your hand. Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon and his country, begin to take possession of it and engage him in battle. And, you know, all of this is very historical. And so, you know, you can read it as a historical documentation of their journey. But as I began to pray into God, why this land? You know, you said, no, 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 no. And it's not like the other ter- people occupying those territories. You know, it's like some of them were peoples that later on, you know, we hear as, you know, God being like, no, you overthrow this people. So it was a very strategic thing for the Lord to finally say yes to Heshbon, this, this territory of Heshbon. And so I started to look into that word and Heshbon literally means wisdom. It means wisdom. And 
God began to kind of unfold this beautiful picture of how wisdom comes first. You must occupy the territory of wisdom. You must occupy and inhabit and live in the place of the wisdom that he's giving you before you can expand into these other territories and places. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that everything that we do with the Lord must be preceded by that time in the secret place, must be preceded by that season of getting the downloads, getting the wisdom, learning the things. And oftentimes that doesn't look like a lot of action. (laughs) It looks like a lot of soaking, a lot of reflecting, uh, often a lot of testing, right? Because God teaches us more often in our questions than in just answers. So all of this is part of that Heshbon. And until we fully embrace and fully soak up that wisdom, we cannot move into more territory. And when we get that backwards, when we don't lead with the wisdom, but we lead with the territory, the taking territory, we tend to lean back on our strategies on, oh, well, this makes sense. So I'm going to take this step or this is what path that most people take. So I'm going to take that path or, um, you know, I'm, I'm really talented in this area. Therefore, I'm going to go further into occupying this territory. You know, all of those ideas, they, they may or may not match up with what the Lord is calling you to occupy. And when we are leaning on our strategy instead of leaning on the wisdom that the Lord is trying to download to us, then we end up stepping into what is not ours. The beautiful thing is the Lord has a territory for all of us to occupy. And as his body, we are all on the same team. We are cheering each other on to fully occupy each other's territory. You know what I mean? Like, yes, you go, you occupy what the Lord has for you. And, and so when we're cheering each other on and when we're looking at it as a collaborative approach as the body, um, there is no lost territory unless we fail to fully occupy our own. So this means not having a critical spirit about how other people are doing things, they're operating in their own territories, but also having a spirit that goes to the secret place before we go to the workplace. This past week, I was staying in um, a room and uh, the key code for this room you know, I, I love numbers. And so I happened to look it up in, um, in Strong's Concordance and the key code for this room was a tried and tested stone. (laughs) And I laughed when I read it because I knew mentally the ways that the Lord was stretching me that week, the things that he was kind of like letting me go through in order that it would, it would bring that um, perseverance and bring out the, those fruits. And it was like so good and so hard in all of those ways. And um, I was like the icing on the cake the next day. I happened to read Isaiah 28, 16, which is, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. For those of you who are in that season of waiting or in that season of just starting and it's like plotting it out, you may be in a cornerstone season. 
as I began to research cornerstones, they're not used today the way they were used to, the way they used to be used kind of in, in biblical times. But the cornerstone was the first stone to be set, right? So it's the, the beginning of that journey. And it had to be tested. Sometimes there's seasons in life where we're like, come on, can we get to the thing already? And God is like, this is pivotal. This is the first step. This is the cornerstone bit of wisdom, the cornerstone bit of understanding that you have to have about me and about how I operate in order for everything else I'm about to build in your life. So they took this cornerstone and it had to be perfectly cut and perfectly uh, positioned in the way that it was facing to make sure that the remainder of everything that would be built on it would be square and would be aligned. Think about what truths, what wisdom is God teaching you right now that he's going to want to build on and that if you don't take time to soak up the wisdom from what he's teaching you in that silly mundane thing that happened today or the the time that you feel like is being wasted where not a whole lot is happening where God is really teaching you these these simple but fundamental truths what is God wanting to build on what he's doing in this season Because if we truly soak up and embrace the wisdom that he is giving us in these seasons that don't feel very important, we'll recognize that everything that is laid on this is either going to be aligned with those truths he's teaching us or not aligned based on if we take the time to get with him and get what he's giving us, to get that wisdom, to get that understanding, because it's not an instant download. It's a, it's a walk and it's a learning process and it takes time. The other interesting thing about cornerstones is they're not noticeable. Remember I said these seasons of wisdom and understanding are often not flashy, adventurous, exciting, (laughs) They're quieter seasons. They're they're the not noticeable seasons, but they're the most pivotal seasons because they become a reference for every other season. Those seasons where the Lord is laying a cornerstone, laying a foundation in you, you're going to reference back to that wisdom that he taught you in many, many seasons to come. Cornerstones often had an inscription and um, there were dates inscribed in it. Sometimes the name of the builder or its purpose. And how beautiful of a thought is that? that was being inscribed into our hearts right now is the name and the purpose of our maker. And he has our dates etched in stone, not just penciled in. So we can trust whether it's a time of excitement or a time of waiting, we can trust that he has his dates and his times and that his timing is perfect. the total weight of everything in the building would rest on this cornerstone. And so if it were removed or if it weren't tested, it would collapse. If it wasn't correctly aligned, then the walls wouldn't be straight. If it was facing the wrong way, the entire building would be facing the wrong way. Our cornerstone is always supposed to be Jesus. And these different seasons that the Lord walks us through allow us to 
learn different facets of Christ because we are forever being transformed from glory to glory into his image. And so if you are in a cornerstone season, a season of waiting, a season of plotting, a season of quiet, a season of not yet, not yet, not yours, it may take longer, but it is worth it because you are in a season like this because God is building and he is preparing what he is cementing in you as the foundation for more to come. So the hope is that there is more to come. There's the whole rest of a building to come. Let him get that foundation right. Because comparatively, once the foundation's laid, everything goes up pretty quickly. With cornerstones, They are the thing that everything else leans on. And if we were to do kind of a self-examination of our life right now, what other things do we lean on? Because often those seasons are shaving off or getting rid of these other little things that would try to be our cornerstones that really can't hold that weight and replacing them with Jesus. This week, some questions the Lord put on my heart to take to him and encounter are, Lord, show me some of the wisdom from you that I need before taking more territory. And we're always excited about the more territory part, about getting to do something new or something greater or, you know, getting to partner with the Lord on a a project or something. But whatever that territory that you're hoping for is, we need to desire the wisdom to occupy that even more. And so seek him on just the beginning of some of that wisdom, some of those things. And maybe he's going to start pointing out to you things that you're like, oh yeah, you have been teaching me that. I didn't know that that was part of a thing that you were going to build on. But ask the Lord to bring to your mind, bring to your heart those pieces of wisdom that he is building into that cornerstone that is going to take you into this next season of making your heart more like Jesus. And then that second question that we're going to ask the Lord this week is, what aspects of Christ are you building on in me? One of the most beautiful things we can hear from the Lord is how he is making us more like him, more like Christ. And sometimes that alone is worth those slow seasons. Because as as the title suggests, just felt like the Lord wanted to just give somebody out there some hope that, you know, all of the no's, all the delays, all of the slow starts doesn't mean that he's not doing it. It just means he wants to do it right. He's doing things in the right order, at the right pace, with the right understanding but he's doing it. And so don't give up in the process because what appears to be a slowdown or a closed door is actually an opportunity for him to lay a foundation in you. Thanks for spending time with me today. If God spoke to you through this time, visit arrowsofzion.com for writings, resources, and ways to partner with me in reaching the unreached with the gospel. You can also find Arrows of Zion on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Have a blessed day, and let's meet here next week.